Well, first, it was a, a cast member on Saturday Night Live for many years. He has done all the presidents that we've had to suffer through. Uh, and I'm really honored to have him. He's going to come out uh, for a few minutes uh, and join us. Please give a warm welcome to Daryl Hammond. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Donald Trump. <laughs> of course, most of you know who I am already because I'm rich and I'm handsome. And you don't hate Trump. Why would I? Why would an anthropologist hate his work? You get a call from Steve Higgins and what does Steve tell you? Um, we're gonna replace you as Trump. Um, Alex, really famous. And, and did you? You're not. Good evening, America. I am going to be so good tonight. But then I said, well, I guess if Alex's not gonna play him in the election, I mean, after the election, if they don't win, then I'll play him again. And then the, the most curious thing, no, you won't play Trump here anymore. So you sat on that bench that day and you cried. Just in the middle and of- And threw up. There? Oh, yeah. And this is like, oh, yeah. That was violent. I was. The Donald has a few plans for that stodgy and outdated old White House. You understand? Gentlemen, I give you the Trump House. When he hosted was when I got my first sense of him. No one ever came earlier. No one ever stayed later. Do that thing. Go ahead. You're fired. He converts unpleasant into pleasant. And I saw that in uh, when Tom Brady hosted. I saw that when Peyton Manning hosted, and, and in particular with Derek Jeter. And these are cats that walk in and go, I can't act, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I've always been able to figure out how to win. Please welcome King Midas himself, Donald Trump. We were doing a sketch with me and Amy Poehler, and Trump was in the sketch, and he's sitting there with me, and we're on a break, and he says to me, um, so listen, I, I can't, I'm not an actor. <laughs> but I have this theory that if I go off script a little, it will be more spontaneous and look re more real. And real is, being real is being funny. Watch. <laughs> His brain rejects negative, negativity. Maybe too much so. Did you watch the election? Did you watch election night? What'd you, where were you on election night? I was right here on the couch. Watching TV? What were you doing? Game of Thrones. There was an election going on. I got kicked out. I'm not in the life. I'm not in that world anymore, and it didn't feel good, so I didn't want to be reminded of that. The feeling is that without this measure, I will dismiss this entire impeachment as a meaningless partisan affair, much the way you have. <laughs> The lockbox would be used only for Social Security and Medicare. Everybody remembers the lockbox. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happens to you back in your, you're in your office, right? And you typically were by yourself? I was in my dressing room. And what, what happens at that moment? I knew I couldn't go out there. I was, I was shaking. I, I was clutching the carpet. I can't talk. I'm too scared to talk. You may think you know the location of the lockbox. <laughs> I created a crisis that was manageable and just made a little cut. I mean, the way you described it, is that the cut? Um, it's one of them. The cutting is really a way to create a more manageable crisis than the one going on in your head, you know? That's one reason to cut. Another reason to cut it is to let people know, there's something wrong in my house, please come look. Instead, I will take those remarks and put them away away in a tiny lockbox. What time am I going out there, man? It's getting late. You know, Clinton, most elegant person ever, and talks, greeting everyone. Why am I Bush? He, he was waiting for me at the cocktail party like that. Big pig, he's a big pig, big pig. Ho, 
Four. Pick. Slot heart. Remember Tr Trump's like, yeah. <laughs> Your point is, if I had a dollar for every... Hey, wait a minute. I do. 